the famous battle chant from New Zealand. It's a call to war. It tells you a little bit about what New Zealanders think about international rugby. Awesome, yeah, yeah. Fantastic scenes here. Amelia. As the New Zealand awesome. Black Ferns lead their haka in that Maori celebration hey, are the words right. from the corners of the island to the neighboring islands and around the world. You stand tall and proud. Women of strength. If that isn't what we're all about here, celebrating the women's game and World Rugby Pacific for 2023, I don't know what we're doing, Major's Land. That was fantastic. Absolutely. It's such an iconic moment. Look at the emotion, the intensity in their faces. But Canada has also been laying a challenge. They've been talking all week and really all year about how they want to prove that their performance against England at the World Cup wasn't a fluke, that they are one of the best teams in the world despite not having domestic rugby, despite not having full-time contracts. And they are absolutely up for this challenge. And what an opportunity to play the world champs at home in your backyard in front of your friends and family. Of course, you reference the World Cup. The Canada finished fourth under Sophie Degetti and the New Zealand Black Ferns won on home soil. Well, this is why we do it. So many young people inspired to watch the game, to cheer on Canada. Going national on TSN. Welcome. Sarah Cox, the perfect person for the job, vastly experienced. She is joined by two Americans in the sidelines and Andrew McNamee, the Scotsman, in the TMO booth. Canada in their traditional red, playing from the left to right. They will want to carry, and they'll want to carry heavy. Their forward platform is a big part of their game. Equally, New Zealand do not back away from the challenge. You hear a lot from that woman, Justine Peltier. She is the little general that runs things. First, the competitive, great step, the dancing feet of Valkalau. She's going for the line. She's just ankle tapped. She could have reached out and scored, but she offloads. Does she get the ball down over the line? Is Demant. She's held up short. New Zealand threatening right off the bat in the opening minute. Shipping it wide is Marina Talino. Nice tackle there in the midfield from Calgary. The prop rule, just five meters out. Going for the line, reaching out, held up on her back. Not able to roll over, Sarah Cox can't get a view. And she's given the drop. She was it love that rolled over there. Explosive start from New Zealand, silencing the Canadian crowd. Not the start. That was the clearance kick attempt. It didn't go far, and there was only a single Canadian chaser on that play. So a clear run at the line. Bahakolo almost scored off that right away, but it was the forwards that went to work. Canadian desperate in defense, holding them up short a few times, but in the end, too much power from the Black Ferns to start this match off. So from that view, Sarah Cox is awarded the try. Maybe some questions from the Canadian camp, but it's not going to matter now as the extras are added. 7-0. Just two minutes into this one, the world champions are showing why they are such. Chelsea Bremner, the older sister, gets that one down. Just check that. Luca Connor, the hooker, got the try. My mistake. And it will be Calgary to restart. So, frantic start here. Battled again, and it's going to be a knock-on scrum to Canada. And the crowd quickly back in it. But Canada will just want to forget about that first minute and get back into it like it's still 0-0. And this scrum attacking opportunity is in a great spot. Right side of the field, about 20, Heights, 30 meters Heights out. Heights and weights. First scrum, this will be somewhere Canada may look to find an advantage. Trouch! 
for New Zealand. Big oh, love and Amy too. Rule anchoring with Luca Connor in the middle. And for Canada, the merchant to Tusi, who is so impactful. Right, you've both got to get and yourself, Menon. You've got to get yourself some Both the Tusi and Menon have come off right. English finals appearances with Exeter Chiefs. They lost the, that match, but both played incredibly well. Said Sarah Cox is assisted by two Americans, Amelia Luciano and Jennifer Lewis. Andrew McNamee Set. in the TML booth. Oh. He was on that last try, and the Canadian coach Kevin oh. may say, Why not? Free kick to Canada. Is that connect? Now they're going to go quickly. The, goodie, the captain has that right. Quick break from Shell. She offloads. Tyson Bukaboom. She's a heavy ball carrier. Great skills on it. Juby sat down. No rage, no right gates. This is better from Canada, putting a few phases together. Shaw hits it flat. Forteza with the break. Fabiola Forteza going for the line. Does she get it down? Sarah Cox says no immediately. Held out. The crowd disagreed, obviously, but Fabiola Forteza went for it. Fabiola Fortez has such an impact for this Canadian team. It's a beautiful line. She goes right through untouched. And has two more defenders to beat, which is a credit to the New, New, New Zealand defense. And goes for the dive, but just held up in the end. So that leads to a goal line dropout. New Zealand kick is one to their post. Shell running, but she's used the blocker there. There's going to be a penalty. New Zealand awesome. looking to go quickly, but they're going to settle things down. What great defensive work from New Zealand to get under that ball. It would have been the perfect response from Canada, but I love the energy that they've come back with. The stop black they're running, the they're attacking, they're finding gaps already. And the call was crossing, which is an unfortunate call. Some consistency from Cox. She didn't use the TMO and she had an immediate call, just as she did on New Zealand's try. Step over. Which wasn't particularly clear from the angle we got. And there's Luke O'Connor. Line out, set piece. Movement. No compete from Canada. Midfield hit up. Lots of options for the ball carrier. And his brunt was looking to offload. I had it, it from an offside on. position, then moved into that in front, okay? Questions asked whether she was offside, but frantic start here just then. And it's a good re good result off this line out. The New Zealand backs last week were absolutely lethal through the middle, creating so many opportunities. So the Canadian defense came up well. They came up together, creating the turnover. Binds. Set. Justine Peltier for Canada defeating the bad scrum. They hold. De Goody Use works the it a little bit left. She referee wants her to use it, as she does. Goes to Peltier. That one's knocked on in the tackle. Referee set it right on. And she's going to take the Canadian shoulder. Stay bound. I spoke with Sophie DeGoody this week and she mentioned how important the front row is going to be and the battle there against a larger pack against New Zealand. But the Canadian front row, Olivia DeMerchant, Emily Totosi, Delika Menon are going to be a key part of this Canadian Trash. performance today. We're already at three scrums in the first seven Bind. minutes. Set. Ready, ready, ready. Solid platform from New Zealand. Shipped away. Again, more good contact. And the Canadian crowd liked it, but there's hands in the rut. Canada will be penalized. Great shot from Fancy Bermudez. Starting to make a name for herself. Is a sevens player. But has scored a few tries, and she is not going to back down from contact or tackles against these Blackferns. Zealand will kick the touch off the penalty. And they will regain possession because it was a penalty if it goes out. But it hasn't gone out. Good effort. Finally. 
Canada thought they could look get the, hands in there. Look at the shot from Fancy. Gets low, gets in her way. And unlucky there because Fancy's doing everything right, she can to get out. And you can stay on your but mark. her feet were still tangled up. You guys up. are going to get numbers and come in quicker, please. Six, six. So you can hear Sarah Cox. My official is obviously mic'd up, laying on the law. You could kind of get in that try. Get out. New Zealand looking to drive to the forwards, and there Canada's going to be penalized. Coming in entry. the side, side entry. Interesting decision here you go? for Demant. Too caught up in the frenzy here. They're up 7 0. This is very kickable indeed. Yeah, there is a clock here, and those of you new to this, the penalty shot clock. So, 60 seconds after the penalty's been awarded, the kicker has to complete their kick. It's 90 seconds off the try. And then Holmes has uh, got about 30. As you mentioned, this is Holmes. She's been working on her long-range kicking, I'm told. So Canada's going to have to be disciplined and not give up too many opportunities. It's coming up to 10 minutes played. Renee Holmes has pushed it across the face. So repeat for Canada. Wait, and they're going to run stop, it out stop. with a wayward kick. A strange decision. It's going to get possession right back to New Zealand. Off right. The Korean crowd liking that Amy Duplessis was wrapped up. It's so organized are the Black Firm team. There's the show and go from Sylvia Brunt. Yes! Knocked on in the end. Just lost it forward and then he moved it back again. Just knock on. And watch for her, number 12, Sylvia Brunt. She was the player of the match last week. She created havoc against Australia. But look at the shot from Juby. Sarah Cal Juby, textbook tackle, gets her shoulder and keeps her legs alive. Always looking to offload. Le Gongo y Peloto, Le Mapu Atai Brunt. Sylvia to us for the rest of this game, we hope. Just knock that one on. Bind! Set! has a little look over at her opposite number. And the goodie pops up. They're going to ship it and use the right boot. They go long and low. On this field turf field here in Ottawa, it's an artificial pitch. It was very, very hot for the earlier match, Australia and the USA. Things have cooled off considerably. 7 p.m. was kickoff time here. What's your second attempt? Another Andy penalty 99, against Canada for a second attempt. Sarah Cox having no time for Canada going after the steal. And looks Nine's like maybe Peltier is in a bit of trouble here. Hands in the rack. Should get some treatment. And Demant just going to keep it going here. But Canada is going to have to be careful around these breakdowns. Clean it up a little bit. Giving New Zealand an option for points or territory is going to creep up on them. The initial defensive effort was good. The inside cover from Justine Peltier. Look at that. The number nine on the number six. Quite a size difference, but she does well and then just can't get herself out. Well, the second player goes for the turnover. The attitude's great, but you got to wait till that first tackler gets out of there to take a shot at the turnover. Well, Justine Beltier took a shot to the face there from the knee, but she's been assessed. She's back on the field. The pride of Gabrielle de Rue, Quebec. Canada needs her. She's been named vice captain to this team now, and that's a credit to her attitude, her leadership and her performance over the last couple of years within this team. She's come up a victory in the French Cup final for Stade Bordelais. That one's stolen. Sophie Goody and her pod get up in front of that long throw. They choose not to use the big forwards. They're using Shell's right boot. Not a lot of return on that as it will be a New Zealand lineup. On you. And Forteza was so close to getting Canada right back into this match. Incredibly dynamic player. A little bit of noise from the crowd means the call has to come in from Love to Connor. 
Oh, Gerard, they simplify it, and this time more effective. Move. They form up. They're driving. They've got 10 meters to go. The Canadian line beckons. Break it away. Breakout. It's a tackle now. Wait. By it's the vice it's captain, it's Simon, but she can't get there. Low it's carry. No, don't touch. Andre. Kawana Kualani, Roos. Mikaeli Tua gets over the five meter line. And it's recycled. Pip Love. Spills it back, but play on. And some big hits midfield. caljavi has been at the center of a lot of them. One of the question marks coming in was some of the players have been playing a lot of sevens. Could they convert and set the defensive lines? That's Caljavi, Bermudez, and Simons. Five meters still for New Zealand to go. That's tipped on. Canada's up to it for the moment, knocking them back. Half gap, it's a full gap, and dancing through the hole. Rouhé de Mont. Outstanding work. The World Rugby Player of the Year. Just showing pure class there, and getting New Zealand's second try. Canada really struggling on these exits, so New Zealand getting opportunities to attack from within the 22. In the end, DeMant just has a clean run through there. Right through the gap. Delika Menon can't get enough on her to take her down. But Canada needs to sort out these exits. The kicks, if that's the option, need to be moved around the field a little bit more. Or start looking at keeping the ball in hand because they look good with ball in hand right now. The great awareness from DeMant. Recognized he was up against the prop and just stepped her, set her up got in behind so as Holmes adds the extras that's 14 points to nil the world champions New Zealand up over Canada well I just wonder there's been so much going on off the field which is fantastic but I wonder if there's been an element of distraction for this Canadian team it's always a factor playing at home you know there's demands there's community events there's family there's friends but this team is motivated, and I don't think it's been a distraction for them. I think it really has motivated them. They just need to settle into this game. Sarah Caljubi playing with a heavy heart. There's a nice kick in deep. And that bring the pressure on, getting downfield well. It was sent. But New Zealand, no panic from them. And again, the half break. Demant looking for the offload. There was no one there this time. Paljubi takes away the midfield and then makes the tackle. New Zealand getting good support over the ball carrier. Oh, there's a high shot from Gabrielle Sant. Referee's letting play go on. Oh, now the arms out. Now she's got a little word in from her assistant official, I think. Uh, and a nice big hit midfield from Bukaboom. Oh, there's a push off the ball. Bukaboom getting in under the skin of the New Zealand players. Jason Bukaboom, just like her name suggests, loves to get into the tackle. I should explain that comment. The Bukaboom family, very famous in ice hockey circles up here, and uh, definitely um, get under people's skins when they play that game. A great sporting family from Ontario. She's also earned herself. She's the second most all-time capped Canadian rugby player on the women's side. Look at the shot, the experience. She knows how to get into these games and she knows how to compete even in the one-on-one -on -one little battles like that big tackle. This is a great couch in rugby club. She's one of her clubs. Maybe looking to go to Europe and keep eyes on that. There's uh, several of the Canadian women. Well, pass out the back row is really well read by Forteza. And the now. Not manual, just trying to settle things down. Now they're trying to disrupt. Now they're going to go to the with a little chip shot. We've had some funny bounces on this turf already. Oh, beautifully gathered and still going. Still in open field, only duplicate. 
the center plane connect, and finally it's going to be a run-in for Midilani Paul. Explosive breakout from the New Zealand Black Ferns for their third drive. No, no. There's more. And it was the chip off the open play. Canadian defense is coming up hard. New Zealand recognizes there's a little opportunity in behind before the fullback can get to it. And Amy Duplessis collects, but look at the support line. She's got four players outside of her. Canadians desperate to chase. But Meriangi Paul, in the end, doesn't have to do much, but well earned, well worked. She got two tries against Australia last week. She's resumed. Too late, too late. <laughs> Just textbook linking up the center pairing, the loose forward, and then the finishing winger. That's how you kind of attack. Good work from Brunt to keep that play alive as well. And Simon involved. Well, a dream start for the New Zealand side as we're coming up to 20 minutes played. Yangi Paul, she came from netball, as we've seen from a few of the nations that play netball. A great so. crossover sport to rugby, and she's really finding her way in just her second cap. Debuted last weekend against Australia and looks very comfortable on the field. Big hit, but a great take from Kennedy Simon. Balls out, so Pelte did well to tie it up, but New Zealand regroups. Just constantly asking questions are the Black Ferns. And they've you won the penalty. Fine. You've got to get out, you've stopped clearance. Very quick on the whistle again. And that was Courtney Hole count this time, not getting out Mike's quickly get enough. Out. Canada getting called for the same penalty here over and over. Too slow to get out or not getting out while someone goes for the turnover. And that's you, six not, penalties not in the first 20 minutes. Yeah, no problems. New Zealand Stop controlling off. the pace. There's a, a so it's off. Down. Canada, you'll take the line now, okay? Just getting some attention. Right, this, this panic out. Yeah. So if you do good, he's going to have a little chat with the referee that's me. listening. Got to change it now, okay? You will be on the line. You will be on the line. In true Canadian fashion, <laughs> Sophie de Goody apologizing for her penalty. Well, It'd be a good opportunity for them to just have a little word with each other, connect on these penalties. This New Zealand look, the new era of New Zealand rugby. Alan the team. And keep in mind, keep in mind too, Kendra Coxedge has what? retired. Yeah. Some of the breakthrough players from the Sevens aren't here. And still the New Zealand team is looking as good as they are at the moment. And it's a credit to how much rugby these athletes play as kids. How ingrained it is in their culture, and that's something Canada is trying to continue to build but you can see the impact that it has. Yeah, the Super Rugby OPK is the envy of Canada right now. They're Can't trying get, to build it. Conversations on. with World Rugby, Summer. how they can build competition in North America so the players don't have to leave. No, no. Great to see that competition. Okay, right. Super Rugby OPK Let's get building in, and in get New Zealand set, and growing. Okay. We understand even greater Let's next year. Let's not up and down. We've got the mark here. Not too wide. In you come. Thank you. Sarah Quox from England. Again, New Zealand, Canada steal the ball, but immediately pounced on by Chelsea Bremner. 14th cap here. Again, Canada missing first up tackles. It's going to be costly. On the ball, get a tour. Still going, still driving. Kicked out. Kicked out the side. The Hold camp jumps on it. And now a counterattack option. Minin is met. Belty is directing traffic. They're going to go to the boot again. Through Julia Shell. She finds touch. 
Well, Fabiola Forteza, her second lineout steal of the match. And if Canna can just hold on to those turnovers, it's a great steal, it's a great opportunity. The New Zealand getting it back. Well, Canada this is your encouraging final warning. Them. You take time like this again, I will free kick you. There we go. That now. seed was planted by the Canadian players saying, today, let's get it in. And it's the third time Sarah Cox has asked them to do so. Which touch there. Off the line out for Paul. No, out. Short ball. Grant hits up hard. So impressive is this. 19 year old. Strong carry there from Pip Love. The front row completely changed out. Ponsonby Henwood and Kyle Navalli were up against Australia. Complete change for this week's game against Canada. Stop, Alana Bremner. No, no, nice no, 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 Another penalty. Maybe we can have a chat. Off feet is the call against Canada. Well, this is comprehensive at the moment. Yeah, of course. And they're going to choose a scrum. And in that is a statement. They're up 20. Yeah, the way the game's been going, they're feeling confident. They've got a great set piece here. And a center scrum is a dream for the backs. Any option and every option is on right now. Completely split. Two out right, four set to the back. Well, the last time these two played, it was 28-0. But it was 6-0 at the half. Canada very much in it. Binds. The opposite story here. Let's see if they can hold out with a midfield scrum. Set. Attacking options okay. both sides. Oh. That's how we know. We go behind. The try score. Nice tackle there from Bermudez. She did really well and she's won the penalty. New Zealand this time arriving off their feet. Once again, fancy Bermudez with the big tackle. New Zealand tried some misdirection, but Canada held strong, held their space. Fancy a product of the Norwester Club in Edmonton and perhaps no greater club has given more to the women's game in Canada. You were going to ask me a question? The third cap. He played really well and has trained really well for Coach Kevin Rue in Spain against USA April. She did exceptionally well. To the front, a bit of trickery. That was the scrum half in there. Okay, trying to stay on the park. Great shot from our team. There's Sophie DeGoody with her first meaningful carry of the match. And she goes forward, Canada goes forward. This is a bit more on brand for Canada. Courtney Holtkamp smashing it up. Inside ball, two to Goody. She keeps her feet. Now Peltier goes wide. There's the tip. Doesn't go to hand, it's off a leg. But immediately scooped up from Amy Duplessis. Great awareness from her. Now Canada's got it back. Caljuli passes it out. Menem kicks it wide. To Goody spinning, running. Let's go, Canada ringing out. That one tries to go at the back door. Doesn't go to hands. Oh, hands on it. Exceptional work there from Chelsea Bremner. On both sides guilty of spilling the ball. The ball's been in play for some time here. 26 minutes played here in Ottawa. This is the fourth game of the 2023. Half four competition. Bermuda's tackles yeah, tackle without the ball. She had a hand I think she's trying, trying to pick it up. Referee says it's okay. The match hits it wide. New Zealand have gone backwards, but have done well to regroup. There's a nice little tip pass. And again, another penalty. New Zealand not releasing this time. It looks like. Nikki Aritua may be in some discomfort. The tackles coming in from Canada might be taking a little bit of a toll. They are up for this in the tackle department. 
and Canada getting themselves down the field for the first time in this game. Yeah, and ill discipline for both teams, but Canada suffering mostly with those seven penalties. Only 27 minutes into the half, and New Zealand now with a couple. As Pitt Love gets a little bit of treatment. She debuted against Canada way back in 20. And she missed the 2018 Rugby World Cup. The PE teacher from Otago will know what to do this sore ankle. There is her career. It's business time when they tape outside the boot. An ankle spat there. A few words for Chelsea Bremner. Bremner, of course, a massive line out Someone. presence. Only to Tosi, normally very apparent in the field, has been relatively quiet here. Tosi goes back to the short side. Again, the pass is not going to hand. Tosi does well to pull back. No, leave no black. Tosi, half count. Offload back inside to Dimension. And there's hands on it. The referee's letting go. Lots of offloads. The goodie, a little bit isolated for the moment, and I think that's cost her, and it's cost Canada penalized. Yeah, you could see she was looking for the offload there. Brought the ball in, tried to tuck it under, but there was no runner, and that left her isolated. New Zealand go quickly on the tap, perhaps sensing Canada a little bit frustrated with their turnovers. Nice pick up there, the low pass. The show, and then realizing nothing was on, had the discipline to take it up, reset. And they're getting off the line fairly well. That one's straight forward, and Canada can have a goal here. Maybe a chip and chase. Belcher looks at the short side. The good is in space, and she can kick. Multi-talented no, athlete that. showing her skills there as the good he thought she may be able to get that one over the top. And it's Justine Peltier with Sophie. The option was there. She just needed another meter or two earlier to get that kick away. Luckily she's back on her feet. Sophie the goodie spent some time in London with the Saracens. Also involved with Canada's sevens team will be back for the Olympic qualifiers the Rugby America's North qualifiers in Langford in August Fines. selected is available for the sevens campaign looking to book a place in Paris the ball pops up the side to Goody does get it away a nice wide floated pass again pretty complicated stuff midfield for Canada as Flo Simons is brought down but they created something eventually doesn't quite go to hand. Plates Ferries with her first touch. Canada looking a little bit disorganized for the moment. This is better. Mena. Pride of Vulcan, Alberta. Hey, it's lost. Ukebun gives it inside to her second row partner. Ocamp gives it back to Marchand. All back, all back. All's gone backward in all of these drops. Titosi stays down, it's still, and it's player. been stolen by Demand. It's a smart play. Well, both sides trying to play. And there's Francis Ramirez. This Canadian side are really letting the ball go. They're playing. I don't know if they've actually set up the right to go out the back. They haven't hit up enough. There's a high tackle. Whole camp has been really busy here. The Expert Ontario, sorry, the Rimby Alberta and Nato. The Red Deer Titans will be proud of her effort here in the opening 30 minutes. As you mentioned, mentioned Canada. But they haven't necessarily frozen the defenders in the middle to, to get around. 
but they are really starting to move the ball, starting to get a little bit expansive. Yeah, no worries, mate. Thank you. And there's the big hit. That one goes up, bit of a seatbelt tackle. No tolerance here. for that. No real bad here. intent from Maya Kuwanakulana Rus. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Head girl at Karanaki College, so she should know better than that. Okay. So Good young player that everyone's looking forward oh, to seeing. Oh, hang on, no, turn off. Great engine. No, the medic's here. No, it's okay. And Give it a second. World Cup as well. Okay, turn on. Titosi. There's a drive, finally kind of set up, but they pull out immediately. Looked like they were maybe on the move. This time they carry through the middle. Setting things up for later. Bukabur, one of the best ball players in the team, gets around the corner there. Peltier still coming. She's rocked at the base. Now the little tap for Courtney Holt counts is going. It's in the hands, let go, Black. It's in the hands, never less connection with it. Shot, hits her in the midfield, the nerd shot. Sprinting into the New Zealand 22, but brought down from behind by Mayarus. This is better from Canada, their best phase of play. The captain takes it up. The vice captain shifts it wide. Peltier, it's Menon who tips it to Bukabu. On her back, but the referee's going to come back. An original penalty to New Zealand not rolling away. Quick tap from De Goody. Five meters out. Big collision. She gets it down. Sophie De Goody on the board for Canada. Well, there it is. They've been building, working themselves down the field, and it's the captain, Sophie De Goody. Quick off that penalty. Canada penalized for the same call numerous times, and then New Zealand, they punished them for the... Sophie pushes the tempo, lets go, and works herself through four defenders. Well, not for the faint-hearted. Sometimes nice when you're the captain, you can back yourself to make that decision. What a hit. I think it's Kennedy Simon, the opposing captain, who took that one, and the goodie's got to make the kick here. To fly to Victoria, castaway wanderer. Roughly stopped her here because of the injury. Okay, mate, if it's not clear, then go to us and about it. The referee's just getting a word in her ear. So unless you've got an angle that clearly shows that separation. Right. There's some question whether she got the ball down, and they'd have to clearly show that she didn't have contact with the ball. The goodie's not <laughs> offering any advice. <laughs> so it's interesting she hasn't gone. Oh, she's gonna have a look. So Chair Cox is not having a look. She's let Sophie De Goody take the kick. De Goody doesn't go through her full routine, which is maybe a mistake, but it goes through. A full seven pointer. Such a talent, Sophie De Goody. And that's the perfect example. Smashes her way through four defenders and then gets up and takes the conversion. Well, an important score, I think, just mentally, if nothing else, and also bringing this crowd, this home crowd here in Ottawa, back into the game. Five minutes to play in the first half here. The Black Ferns up against Canada. Boom gathers the kickoff, brought down immediately. Well, it was that lady, Olivia the Merchant, in her 55th cap, the pride of Mapledale, New Brunswick. We got the initial break that got Canada that try. Well, this is much better. Canada's starting to win a few collisions and get some go forward. Belte slices across the front of the New Zealand defense. It's a goodie. That's an on for her. And I like the option playing out of there. They didn't go to the kick and they've got themselves to the 40. Well, wonderful messages got on the field from Kevin Ruay and Jack Hanrahi, the Canadian coaches. Maybe put the boot away for a while and see if you can force New Zealand to defend. Valjuvi attracts three black jerseys. Four minutes to play here. Again, De Goody cleaning up the mishandling. 
There's a hand in there. there. We go back. There's no advantage. You're always going backwards. So there's a high tackle. We're going to go back for that. Canada didn't gain the advantage. Just high on the way down. If you're new to rugby, that the referee sees an infraction. They can play on, and if the team who doesn't offend gets an advantage, they can have it. But nothing came there. So a much better last five, seven minutes of play from Canada is just then. Absolutely. There's Julia Shell. She's looking to get them down the field now. Into the New Zealand half. But I do think if Canada keeps the ball in hand, they look dangerous. They're starting to put together some phases. Forcing New Zealand to tackle. Rather than just kicking the ball back and giving New Zealand ample opportunity to play freely. Yes, time's off. We've got time off. It looks like Luke O'Connor was getting some treatment behind the play. And she's actually left the field. So on comes last week's hooker, Georgia Ponsonby. No slouch as a replacement. That is New Zealand's quality. But Canada driving now, keeping it in. We saw a lot of this at the World she's Cup from them. And it was effective against the Americans in the first Pac-4 game. We've regrouped. I actually thought we'd see a lot more of this just then, but they've waited until 37 minutes in. The goodie's got her hands on it. They're on the New Zealand 22, and they're still going. Same malls as the referee. So New Zealand can't tackle this. It's been shipped on to Tyson Bukaboom. And they've got open. They're play. open. Bukaboom's away. The short pass to Fortesa. Can she get it down this time? Yes, she does. Outstanding response from the Canadian forwards to put him right back in this match. who's already had so much impact, is the one to finish it with the big run. She almost had one earlier, and there she is. Tyson setting her up beautifully on the inside. But that is a forward stride through and through. The work at the mall continuing to roll and move and work against the New Zealand defense. Well, Goody, who was getting in all that work, now has only a minute to kick the conversion as well. New Zealand regrouping under the post. They face total control of this match. Remember, they turned down that three in front of the post. It's going to give them a 24 0 advantage. They're now only up nine with this conversion to come. Make that seven. One try the difference here in Ottawa as Canada claw their way back against the world champions. combination of Fabiola Forteza, Sophie de Goody. They are all over the field on attack and defense, and the two of them are having a big impact so far. We're talking to Coach Kevin Murray. Her description of Forteza is dynamic and competitive, both on display here. Inside. And they're going to kick long. A nice kick there from Shell. With less than a minute to play. New Zealand right at halfway. Oh, really, a half of two halves. New Zealand dominating for the first 30 minutes. Canada responding with two tries. And New Zealanders are set out of this line out again. Sarah Cox warned them before, but letting them do it again here. In five. Canada compete again, but can't steal this one. So, New Zealand a chance to respond right at the end of the half. Great teams do this. See what they can conjure up. Thanks, mate. Chelsea Bremner takes it into contact. She spilled it. Jatosi flips it out wide. And the crowd knows what they'd like to see. Over. It goes wide. Referee said advantage over. I don't know how. Maybe because it was a knock on. Crawling forward is Paige Ferris. You weren't on the ball. So. Canada had improved that. Passing game, the first and second receiver. The ball's going to hand a bit more consistently. Stop and go from for Simons. University of British Columbia product. Seven standout. He's wrapped up, so she wisely goes to ground. We're in the red numbers here, so Canada could kick it off the park. Or they can keep playing as they've done here. Oh, it just doesn't bounce kindly. For Paige Ferris. She knows it. But what a great 
first half of rugby. New Zealand came out of the gates, dominating, up 21 points, but Canada responded with a quick 14. Here in Ottawa, it's New Zealand 21, Canada 14. And just then, as we hear this crowd giving the support, as important as anything, they gave the crowd something to cheer about and get back into them and behind them for the second half. Really good response from Canada, going down 21-0 is a tough way to start a match against this team but they've put together some really good pieces of possession and to come away at halftime with this score they'll be happy with that but hungry for more
historic win as the world champions came to town. Both sides showing their unity and respecting their cultures. The Māori culture of the Black Fern celebrated with their haka. But with the ceremonies done, it was all business. And the Zealanders came out firing. Tyson Bukabun has had an outstanding game. Big hits like that were the norm. Shell not able to find touch, not keep opportunities. And lots of possession to this New Zealand side, who are so potent in open field. Vakoro almost getting to the line, but seconds later, it was the hooker. Luca Connor, who reached over there in that pile and got New Zealand on the board only one minute and 20 seconds into this match. Great first start for the New Zealand side that have traveled from Brisbane last week where they dominated over Australia. They kept the pressure on, threatening the Canadian line. So many weapons out there, none greater than their captain, Demant, the World Rugby Player of the Year. Got a class try, just spotting the half gap. Turning five points for her team. And it was all New Zealand at this point. And the Canadian fans started to quieten down a little bit. All sorts of tools in the Black Ferns chest. This was just pure determination from Amy Duplessy. And then the great backing up, as we've come to expect from New Zealand rugby. Beautiful support. And in the end, it was Nirangi Paul under the post. She got two last week and adds to it against Canada. At this point, 21 0. You may have thought it was over. They had a kickable kick that New Zealand turned down. Maybe ruining that. Because after Paul scores this one, it is all Canada. The forwards took over. They were driving. They were finding holes. Bukaboom, outstanding on the ball. Finding some holes in that New Zealand midfield and earning a few penalties as a result. And the captain backed herself with a quick tap. Watch this collision on the line. Bang, a massive hit. But then the reach out from Sophie to Goody to get Canada's first try. The type of individual inspiration they needed. And they were back into this game down 21 points to five. Such a leader. But I think the message came on from the sideline. Let's get our forwards going. And go they did off the line out. Driving, pumping the legs. First bit of go forward from this forward back. And I wonder if we may see more of this in the second half. Directing traffic was a diminutive Peltier, but it worked as they built and built. The goody got her hands on it, but it was probably the player of the first half for Canada. Fabio Forteza yeah, gets her hands on it eventually. Splits out the middle here, takes the pass from Bukaboom, dives over the line. She was denied earlier, but this one is Canada's second try. Great work from the Canadian pack, and maybe they found a little something, a way to compete. The Canadian fans loved it. These celebrations all round. As this first half ends, 21 points to 14. Stats, as you'd expect. New Zealand dominating territory. Canada had a lot of possession, more than you'd probably expect, but those penalties hurt them early on. Referee Sarah Cox not happy with their work at the breakdown. Something I'm sure they'll be talking about. And New Zealand put a few balls down, uncharacteristic for the world champions. So highly competitive first half here, based on that last 10 minutes where Canada came back. Pretty even, ruck and mall time. Both sides offloading a lot, New Zealand in particular. And there's a couple of line-out losses, maybe something to address for Canada. Two steals for them over New Zealand but as you'd expect for the number one and number four teams in the world it's been an outstanding display of the women's game up here in Ottawa will join us after the break as the second half comes back in Pacific Four rugby action
There's no panic in this room. They've done a World Cup. They know their rugby. And Coach Alan Bunting will have a clear, concise message, I'm sure. It'll be clear, but they will talk about how Canada got themselves back into this game. Canada, you're really proud of that comeback. They'll need to remain calm. They are definitely in this. But they need to keep playing the way that they want to, keep to the game plan, take the opportunities that present themselves. My question is, has the game plan changed a bit for Canada? We saw what their forwards achieved there in the last five minutes. And I'm wondering if they get behind the likes of Tyson Bukaboom, who was outstanding in that first half. Absolutely. And I think the other thing is to keep possession. The kicks aren't going their way, and they're just giving New Zealand Sorry, the opportunity to attack. So if I... We're in that room. I'd be saying, let's keep the ball. We're getting go forward. We're gaining momentum. We're getting ourselves down the field. 
There we go. Second half about to start. Canada's Sarah Kaljuvi gets us underway. New Zealand, the Black Ferns, the world champions, currently up by a try. We have 40 minutes of rugby left here in the fourth game of the Pacific Floor Championship. The winner of this will take the top of the table. Black Put their Black. hands very firmly on a qualifying position in WXV to take place in November. The World Rugby New Championship with the top six teams in the world down in New Zealand. And that's a nice kick. Found some space that's behind nice, the winger. Nice. Well, you're also gonna the full back out in the middle of the field. So a little bit of niggle at the front of the line out between Pip Love and Tatosi. Just wonder if maybe New Zealand took their foot off the gas a little bit, cut off a couple of tackles. There we go. Here's the drive I thought we might see the Canadian forwards. Such a big part of their success at the Rugby World Cup last year. Now they're crowding across field. Well, I would say clear message from head coach. Looking for the short side. Could have gone earlier. Big Ferris has to stop and start. You've lost it, Black. Hands off call for Black. It's moved away. A positive start for the Canadians, although a great tackle from Mikael Itou. The ball's loose. Tosi. The tackle's coming in. Sylvia Brunt doing her job there. With the boom on the ball yet again. Shell is hit. Player in ball by the substitute on the field. Substitute hooker Georgia Ponsonby. They lost Luca Kana early on. She scored a try but then had to leave the field. You're just joining us. Canada have got numbers out right here if they move it. Needed to be tipped, but Kaljubi doesn't take the risk. Hans <laughs> Bermudez, oh, she's hit solidly. Across the chest of the referee, fair tackle. New Zealand players caught in there. Maya Roos. Again, a bit of a no look pass, and it's spilled loose. The kick and chase from Amy Duplessy. Uh, Sabrina Poulain does so well. The player from St. George, Quebec, was recently in the HSBC Dream Team in Toulouse in the World 7 Series. She doesn't have much space here. Gabriel Sent looking for the handoff. Yes, please. Uh, New Zealand are really committed in defense right here. Who could do? Okay, so nice done. tackle from Stand Kennedy down. Simon. Make sure you the ball. Yes, please, Reds! It's slow ball now. They're going to extend the no, run. Wait, so Belty can put a boot in. And they go to the box no, kick. No. Not too high. So, really free ball for New Zealand to build their attack. It is a. Keeping an eye on that. Keeping it alive well is Paul. She got one try early on. Three tries for New Zealand in that first half. Nice flat pass to Duplessy. Ball's out. Chelsea Bremner. Oh, the show and go. And finally the offload to Amy Rule. Canada coming up too quickly, leaving a the hole. They've exploited it. Amy Duplessy in the gap, over the line. Amy Duplessy gets New Zealand's fourth try and the bonus point. Well, she's been putting the pressure on the Canadian team with her chase and her work off the ball and earns herself a try on this one. The defense in a bit of a panic players still trying to get back and a simple two-on-one to put her over Aridiana Marina Toino got the work done she saw that the Canadians became disconnected on the fringe there and she took the inside gap and set up Amy Duplessy great work and extras added 
from Rene Holmes. So New Zealand in the first five minutes silence this Canadian crowd and have a chance to celebrate. Duplessis, the South African born player who came to New Zealand as a kid. Finally able to come over and support the World Cup campaign last year. Moved to Invercargo from South Africa. Strong carry from Sylvia Brunt again, sitting down. I think Canada won't want to be kicking that ball away, giving this clean possession to New Zealand. There's the half cap. Gamak creating again. Oh, the pass doesn't quite go to hand. There's a smile because she knew she was away if that one stuck. Rue Demant, remarkable vision, attacking the line and getting the break. It's a nice breakthrough. And New Zealand were well and away unlucky not to finish this one. Because <laughs> she had nobody in front of her. Ended up benefit there. So Canada line out. A few fresh legs on there for New Zealand. Kate Henwood's on for Phil Pickelove. Say more. Always Kareem bad. Is also on there. Yeah, for Amy Rule. So the whole front row getting a rest. Again, kind of having some success with that rolling mall. Ooh, solid shot goes in on the Canadian captain. No, no, sorry. Oh, up, up, to the middle. Still going through the middle. It's Mina. She decides to run over the opposing fullback, and she does. Quick ball. Really good defensive work, taking away the space and then putting in the tackle from the World Rugby Player of the Year. The match. But they've fallen off their feet, penalty to Canada. Well, she's a nuisance on defense, Rahe Demant. Creates or gives up the penalty there, but Canada can't find touch on the clearance. It's blocked, and she gets it back, so some reprieve for Julia Shaw. The mistouch options are wide. Gone backwards to the referee, but now it's spilled. Yeah, no, it's not good. Nothing on there for New Zealand. We're going to hear okay. the whistle, and we do. No, going anywhere. Knock on. Just slipped out of the goodies' hands there. Yeah, back and forth possessions here. Let's go, Canada! They missed the clearance kick. But benefit she get the ball back on the bounce. Yeah, unfortunate kick from Julia Shell there, just putting her team back under pressure. Right, but sure her teammates got up way, okay, to block the kick. Nice work from them. Alex Tesse, of course, out of the Canadian effort. The stretch fracture. Uh, Hopefully, will be back in time for WXV. And we're going to see some fresh legs for Canada. Gabrielle sent from Regina, and Castaway Wander in Canada and an extra chief in the UK. She's being relieved by Sarah Savota, the Belleville, Ontario product, also playing in the UK for the for Lightning. And she calls Grantham Harlequins her home team. Another famous Canadian rugby family. Trouch! Binds! Set! Scrum steady. Pops out the side, surprisingly carrying the mail. Now they're going to go short side. Big subs are on the field. That is Kelly Nivali. She is a presence. But he's trying to steal it. Now the kick, a little over the top. It was spotted. There was a little bit of blocking. The referee's letting them play. Sabrina Poulin steps out of one tackle. Belgium brought down. And there's going to be a penalty for interfering there. So, a free one for the Canadians. Kagutis is why not? And have a kick. 
A big hit came in on her. And Paluna Valley. So the original penalty will go to Canada. New Zealand not rolling away. Both sides have been guilty of that today. Ten minutes into the second half, but you sense the temperature's gone up a little bit. Now the goodie's going to take over the kicking duties. She misses. Hello. Just goes into touch. I think a good decision from her. But she tried to chip in behind. And look at the treatment she got from Kaluna Valley. It was a free play again for Canada, so she tries to put it through. Subs. Knowing if they don't get it, they will come back to that penalty. They got subs. In which they did. Well, we haven't heard Emily Tutosi's name a great deal. We knew she was going to probably have a long shift at hooker. Hang on, hang on. 20 hang on, meters up. out. I'm just wondering if we may see her on the back of the lineup drive. More subs right, coming on, on the wait, field. On, back on. Oh, six and eleven black. Well, a great oh. moment for Lucy Jenkins on the field for her first Black Ferns cap. Congratulations. Outstanding Super Rugby competition this year. The Canterbury product back. is now a Black Fern. The overthrow get cleaned up by Canada's men now. It's a goodie. Take a look at the line for a moment. Now Shell's having to go. Canada finding some return for the quick pick and go. It's a goodie. Spilled another one. Thought he went backwards. Total effort from both these sets of women doing the nation's Come proud. Come and there all are little gaps around the breakdown. Sophie DeGoody is seeing. I mean, those screens may indeed be for her. She's a rock star, but actually they are for another nice moment for Canada. The Caledon, Ontario native, Claire Gallagher in the 22 jersey has just come on. Fancy Bermudez will relieve her. Her first cap, the Ottawa Gigi. Congratulations to her, the local university okay, water team off. member. Water off. So close. Yeah, I know. Well, some Sorry. players will go their whole career without playing at home. And All here good. she is in her All first good. cap water for off. Canada in the town she went okay. to university, close to her hometown. Come and on. you're certain there are family and friends and university teammates in the crowd tonight supporting her. Congratulations to Claire. And on the other side, Lucy Jenkins. What a moment from her. Amazing final this year. Matatouf lifted the Super Rugby Opiki Cup. Set. So good to see the health of the women's game. All these young players putting their hands up. Big drive from Canada. They stole in the head. They have indeed. And wisely going to the short side, the rugby brain of Peltier. Smart. Quick pick. Five meters out. Canada down 14, looking to narrow the gap. Still pounding away at the line. Would it be the dream story? As Gallagher had a look at the line. Red jerseys lining up. Two meters to go to Totsi. She's short. The goodie's short. With the dive. Sarah Savota, she stopped. Inches in this one. Looked at the pass. The goal over the top. Olivia de Vichon, who else? And the goodie saying, hey, set it down, ladies. We're right back in this. Canada's third try by the pride of New Brunswick, Olivia de Vichon. And showing her experience. She has been so crucial to Canada up front. We mentioned how important the front row would be in these games. Inch by inch, they went forward, effort after effort. And look at Olivia de Vichon. Even with the pause, she's able to use her little footwork to get around and over and over the line. And there's Sophie saying, let's go. She knows she's got the kick to tape, but she also needs her team still has some work to do. She's got 45 seconds on that conversion shot clock. Sophie the Goody, hours spent training on Windsor Park in Victoria, kicking goals. Sweet, sweet strike. And what a lift. The captain's given the team, keeping them within one score against the world champions.
Well, they tried about 10 times, but finally the merchant said, I'm going to have a go. And for 55th cap, not a bad body of work in the Canadian jersey. Long kick by New Zealand. Poulain gets it stripped. That's the experience of this New Zealand side. Again, constantly causing problems. Sylvia Brunt. But now it's New Zealand who spill it forward. And a little congratulations there for Cal Juby. And I mentioned early on, Sarah Cal Juby playing with a heavy heart. Lost her father just recently and vowed to put all her frustration and disappointment in that into this match. And she's done it well. What a great leader and a player that you know well and uh, is really proud to put on that red jersey. She's been around Canadian rugby for a long time. She's really starting to make this number 12 jersey her own. And she has showed up in this game, as you mentioned, with family on her mind. And our thoughts are with her family at this time. Big shout from New Zealand. Referee so straight stopped out it. The same tunnel. Straight out the same tunnel. Ooh, perhaps mercifully for the Canadians, Sarah Cox has said the ball's come back out the tunnel. Tunnel. It needs to be struck by the hooker who's in the middle of that scrum if you're new to rugby. But what a push. And I'm probably a mental lapse distance. from Canada. The shoot's at the same tunnel. We're just resetting it. Right there. Canada will keep field. possession here. Tana Ho Hyatt. Awesome. Thanks, mate. I'm in, in the nine roll. Former basketball player and a sevens star. So any space out there, she's going to have a go. Pelte still in there. And the nine jersey always scanning the field. Look at her. So Canada, perhaps a bit more prepared. They're still on the back foot. The goodie has to dig in deep to get that one out. Belte says, I'm going to put the boot to it. It's an awkward kick. Ooh, it's kept in. So not great execution from Canada there. Perhaps the moment getting to them a little bit. They haven't gone where they need to. And once again, 30 meters from your... A chip to the winger might not be the best option. You've just given New Zealand territory and a good opportunity off this line out. Full six person line out for New Zealand. If anyone knows how to execute in the last 25 minutes of the game. Oh, nice ball out the back door. Pass, a little overrun there. Options and duplicy. She's been a live wire. It's a one on one battle. We've got it out wide. Textbook finishing from the New Zealand Black Firms. Pure class. It's a scene we've seen before in this game. Canada kicking away possession and New Zealand making them pay with a try. Mariangi Paul with her second of the game. And Canada's backs just struggling with the numbers and the overlaps, having to turn in and defend. Sabrina Poulin trying to trace across, but they've run out of time and space on this one. But they've given that possession to New Zealand. And these are key moments. They're getting themselves seven points back in at each time and then giving up the opportunity to go again by giving possession away. Well, what a battle. And if you're back in New Zealand watching on Sky, Ricky, Charmaine, and Honey in the studio, hope you're enjoying this. And for Canadian fans on TSN here in Canada, hope you're enjoying the Canadians giving their best side. So 12 points the difference. Uncompromising, as you said, New Zealand jumped on that poor execution. Went two phases and it was over. Kaljabi kicks it long. The pod goes up and it's gathered to Mayarus. Spilled momentarily. 
from Ryan Ugali. Off road. The scrum half. He said she likes the space. What a step off the right foot. Still going. Mohana. But intercepted by the Canadians. Much to the right of the home fans. And guess who? Cortez are getting all the way back there. He's not happy with that. Offside. New Zealand player still trying to work back. Hasn't got. Siding break from the substitute scrum half. New Zealand couldn't turn it into points. And the third kicker for Canada. Does find touch this time. And that's great territory by Claire. Look at the step by Hohea. Fabiola Forteza again with the impact, working back. Look at the athleticism to grab that ball, hold on to it mid stride. What an effort by her. For me, shades of your former teammate, Karen Peckham, just pure determination, always being a pain and disrupting that burst from New Zealand. Ooh, and that lift is a bit early. The referee's going to have a reset. Let's down the line. Ball in quicker, please. Back it goes. We reset again. Let's make sure we're staying on line. Let's start screaming people's faces. No okay? messing with Sarah Cox. So Tatosi still in the game. They suggested she might be staying for a longer shift. And then a Toba player herself. Still not the... Maybe that one's not straight. On the outside. Not much in it. But... Crowd not happy with that. But the ball's got to go down the center. Right, let's make a decision. And something that the New Zealand women are used to is a nice partisan crowd, especially for the World Cup on home soil last year with those great scenes. But Canada, very rare for them as a 15s team. You've had it in Vancouver as part of the World Series as a 7s player, but 15s crowds, 10,000 here celebrating. And it's great to see, and great to see them getting right in behind the women in red. In you come. There's one thing about Canadian fans, regardless of what's actually happening on the field, they will absolutely support their home team. Ponsonby hits her target, they get it wide. Mixing it up midfield, another great off though, doubling around. Beautiful work, the center's combining again, Duplessis decides to kick. It bounces up high, but not forward, and it's another try. For the fullback this time, Renee Holmes. It was Grunt and Duplessy combining to carve up the Canadian defense. The referee just wants to make sure it's not off a black hand as that was knocked forward. I think it's off a red hand, but the referee's asked to have a look. What do you see, Gislain? I think Sarah Cox wants to make sure it wasn't a black hand here. As it gets loose, it wasn't a black hand that knocked it forward. The initial break from Brunt. I've got it off red, not black. And the chip through. There it is here. Perfectly weighted. It's definitely off red. It might be off. Yes. Might be off Holmes there. We'll probably let you know what they think. <laughs> the crowd is quite certain it's off Holmes. Still waiting for a call. Andrew McMillany, the Scotsman in the TMO in the truck with our crew. Yep. That was not an easy one. So I think she's going to allow it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Come on. Yep, that's uh, bad news for Canadian fans. The kicker doesn't know it's been awarded. Yeah. The work, the work off the ball for Mamie Duplessis this game has been unbelievable. She's been chasing everything. The meters she's put in are building and building. Just making double sure that that's definitely no contestant from Black. From the sideline, hanging up, and it's good. She's checked. There's definitely no contact. So explain to the Canadians they're checked and they're comfortable that it is a try. So back we go again. 40 points up for New Zealand. Canada have some work to do in these last 17 minutes. Just wait. Well, 
Outstanding work from her today. The youngster, Sylvia Brunt. Now we could see a little dose of this from the New Zealand forwards. But they've knocked it forward. Canada have a little bit of a chance here. The midfield scrum. And with some of the sevens players lurking around this field. Poulin, Simons, Bermudez, Calgary and Paige Ferries. They can't see Canada's chances. Although, Calgary's going to get a breather. And on comes... Shoshana say you want a top up. The White Rock BC product. Very, very exciting young player. University of BC. She's impressed in the preseason games, the warm-up games. The BC Bears. So one of the few British Columbia players in this team. Let's see if Shosh can get her hands on the ball. And what a story for her. She got her first cap in 2019. Gets her second cap in 2023 credit to the work she's put in off the ball and a great first touch. That's all you ask for, the goody. With some of her fellow forwards walking a bit here. Looking for the short side. You saw the hand go out there. Peltier still using whole camp. Shell! It's the wrong color jersey and on her debut. Busting into open field was Lucy Jenkins. That one's gone down through Kennedy Simon. Well, it's all happening here. A great read from young Lucy Jenkins. Popular player. A bright future ahead of her. One of the things that's happening here, and perhaps it's a, a question about the depth of the Canadian team, is that Tutosi and Hooker only just gone off, and Justine Peltier um, no. she don't play for is still on the field. Yeah. So Two key players for Canada, but in this heat, she's good so far, she's pushing straight to keep it like that. Right. Well, there's Tutosi getting a breather. McKinley Hunt on the field. Sweet. King City, Ontario's finest oh. Euro Barbarian. These are awesome moments for these young women. Sharks! Yeah, patched up some sort of bleeding situation again. And is ready to put in the scrum here. Simon's is lurking behind the scrum. We'll see if she moves into space. The goodie digs it out. She shows right. Again, not great play from the captain, the vice captain there. Too much indecision. Whole cap. Well gathered by Bermuda. She picked it up well. Rose puts it back in field. Off and running. Sabrina Poulain. She trips herself up. Great breakout for Canada. Poulain does well to just keep possession. But they're in New Zealand territory. Tosi's still on the field, apologies, and she's been involved in these last two plays. The ball's held up, but Canada's moving it forward. Oh, and they spilled it. So real energy from the Canadians, but not the result they wanted. No, it's a great break from Sabrina Poulain, trying to push the tempo. Little inside ball from Paige Ferries. Sometimes that's the... the downside of this turf lose your feet a little bit turf toe <laughs> <laughs> but canada right let's go time's on let's warm up alexandria ellis on the field Trout. another ottawa native our haven scottish Bones. and in ottawa Gigi, the local university Set. team new zealand put in we're gonna go short side Drew Kennedy signing. No, you She's moved to the eight hole. Goody trying to steal it. Was to release. Nice hands. Back up front row playing there. Well, then the kick through again. It's worked previously. Poulain's got a lot of ground to cover. She's on it. She backs herself. Puts it down. Peltier. What an engine on this woman. Justine Peltier still going. 
playing the best team in the world in 67. Every breakdown. A wayward kick. Could this be costly for the Canadians? Well, Judge hitting it at the angle, coming up pace. And he rang the ball, she puts it back inside, it's gone backwards. Got a new volley. That one doesn't go to hand, and the referee's going to blow a quick whistle there, even though Canada had their hands on it. And New Zealand just really playing now, even despite 11 handling errors. We saw that last week as well. 11 turnovers would normally, or 11 handling errors, sorry, would normally mean problems, but the amount of times they've had the ball and done something brilliant with it is far Drops. beyond the 11 handling errors. Kendra Williams Bones. on the open side here with the captain signing going to number eight. Andrew Reynolds. Here a plenty player, fresh legs. That's it, half gap. Oh, look at that great work from Reynolds, getting to her feet, stealing the ball, textbook jackling. Dupacy, who's been superb in this match at all the right moments for the Black Ferns. Well, this is the confidence of the world champions, just pushing it through the hands. That's a greasy, wet ball in sweaty conditions. Alex Ellis dumps it, trying to steal it. Ohio doing her job. Maya Roos still on the park. As is the... Kate Henwood. Another player, plenty player. She's conceded the penalty. And it's Holkamp, I believe, who's got the ball. Sophie the Goody could <laughs> get long sidelines both sides. So she says, I'll do it down the middle instead. I don't know if it was intended. It's not a bad option. Paige Ferries is up to it. That one doesn't go to hand, so Canada gains some territory here. Loose ball still. Gathered by Renee Holmes. She's got to try to her name. Oh. Two Sorry, not to proceed. That is Kelsey Tonetti. Nice run from her. Kind of throwing their bodies in there. Sit down, says Georgia Ponsonby. Nothing on out wide. She's shown a lot of class for her young years, says Sylvia Brunt. Good decision from her there. Although Canada come in. Counter attack. Ellis gets her hands on it. Maybe one last chance here for the Canadians. Ten minutes to go. Is there offside there? No, the referees let it go. Incredibly quick off the line. Canada still wanting to play, and they're creating the turnovers at the breakdown to get the possession. Got a time off here. Deserve it for both sets of players. Hey, ladies, you're going to have to help me out here. Number 12. Yeah, and it is going to be <laughs> number 12. Lagongo Ipoloto Lemapu Atai Brunt. Out. Standing game, what a performance in defense on the ball with her footwork, superb stuff. That's the final knock on. Right, let's go, let's go. Oh. And there is Olivia Apps, another local player. You know her well just then. What a moment for her. Captain of the Sevens group. Well, she was a ball carrier <laughs> at the 2015 Pan Am Games when we played there, and here she is. She's the captain of the Sevens team and getting her debut for the women's 15s team. Trouch! Congratulations to Olivia Apps and her family who are Boys! most definitely in the crowd tonight. Quite a famous family in these parts. Set! So she'll be putting in a scrum half, taking over from Justine Peltier. And on the back comes Poulain. So hard. Uh oh! Guess who? Duplicy. Does she have enough gas to get there? Just short. She tries to pop it up, but it's been spilled. And a big collision. Great tracking back from the Canadians, but Duplicy has been an absolute thorn in the side of the Canadians all day.
Absolutely. Fab looking for the offload, not really in control. And Duplessis, again, the work off the ball. Look at the chase. Olivia Apps is there with fresh legs, but look at Flo Simon. She's played the entire game so far. Sprints back, saves Canada. Duplessis, there's some questions asked about her defense. She worked really hard on her game. Coming out of the Super Rugby OPK. So she's been an immense force here. And the scrum under pressure. De Gritty spins once. She's had to do that several times in the second half. Uh, a bit tired and a little slow to get up for some of those Canadians. But again, these are all experiences that are going in the bank. We're all looking at Rugby World Cup 2025 in the UK. We're looking at WXV in Canada with the bonus point they've secured here. They'll probably put their hand on a trip to WXV in New Zealand in yeah, November. It's, a, it's the secondary goal of this tournament. Obviously, they wanted to come in and finish first in this tournament. But eyes on the WXV. It's an opportunity for all the women's teams across Five. the nation to get more experience, Set. more games, grow the women's game, and Canada want to be in that first tier. And apologies to correct myself. The three tries won't get that bonus point, so still up for grabs. Stay there, stay there. It would be a goal of Canada in this final seven minutes to try and get over the whitewash. Francis. Even though they may not get the list, they're playing advantage for New Zealand. Short! Short, you heard our referee. Oh, what a pass and what a finish. Amy Duplessy doing it all. Well, we've said her name so many times throughout this game. And she deserves that one. Nice little line. Well, a hat trick puts your name halfway on the MasterCard player of the match. But all the rest of the work she does has truly got to have her as a leading candidate. With their eyes on the WXV, they should be looking to secure a bonus point. They need a try. And they get one bonus point for four tries. And that would mean it's impossible for the USA to catch them. Well, and we have had it confirmed to be awarded after the match, the MasterCard player of the performance from her as part of this world champion Black Fern effort. More possession for New Zealand. Quite clinical. The hours on the training pitch are paying off here. There was a scare. And they've responded. In slow was a New Zealand arrival. Ferris thought she had a steal there. I thought she might have had a fair claim. Lucy Jenkins with another strong carry. Well, in the center of all this effort was Demant. There's a steal. Olivia Apps is on it. So, Referee right asks her to release, and she does. Maya Roos shifts it wide. Demant is wrapped up. A little bit static for New Zealand at the moment. Canada having to work from side to side here in defense. Finally, the kick comes in. Will this be an opportunity? Pushing it wide. Here's Claire Gallagher. Good quick ball from them, but New Zealand quickly off the line. And still backwards from Claire Gallagher. And now New Zealand attacking through the skipper. She's put in a body of work here. To pass. Nice short ball, and Demant pops up. Who else? Right foot, left foot. Ops comes back with the tackle. That's going backwards off a red hand, so it's play on. Just meters from the line. It's going to be 
a penalty against Canada and a yellow card. He hasn't made the call yet. Never got back on side. I don't know where the ruck was that she had to be on side from. We'll have a look at it. But that is the Sinbin. And I think it's Canada's captain, Sophie De Goody, who won't take any further part in this one. There she is. Frustration, I'm sure. What an effort she's put in. Sarah so Cox is deemed it was a professional foul as she's coming back and that didn't get back on side. And she prevented a score. There we go. New Zealand scrum. Lots of high numbers in that scrum, so they're trying to settle and make sure the subs do their job. But look who's in the middle of all that for New Zealand. But don't Chelsea Bremner just plugging away in the engine room four and five. You don't win test matches like this without a big effort from players like that. Binds. Set. I wonder if this replacement front row might have a look at a pushover. No, they're going to ship it. Oh, tons of space with one short. Canada can't cover the space. And then over in the corner is Kelsey Tonetti. Was supposed to be playing at the PR7's competition in the U.S. Was called into the squad last week. Great moment for her. But simply executed. Canada without their captain and number eight. Just had too much space to cover on the short side. Simon's maybe coming in when she didn't need to. Kelsey Tonetti, try for New Zealand. Reminding the kicker of the minute conversion shot clock. Less than a minute to play here. Again, maybe the message got on to Canada. Some wear and tear on that body. That's the uh, turf here. She tried to prevent it. But those black rubber balls are tough for Renee Holmes. She's still got to kick this goal, blood and all. Step to the side, and then the right leg pendulum will come through. She's having a look. She just left it out front. Won't really matter in the larger scheme of things. And as I was saying, hopefully Canada have at least the intent to try and get a try for a bonus point here. Let's go. Let's go. That one's bobbled. We're in the red up, numbers. Prior so prior to the knock-on time, it was up. And that'll do it. Sarah Cox blows the whistle. And the Canadian crowd gives the women in red a big cheer. But in the end, it was a dominant performance from New Zealand. They win this one 52 points to 21. Hugs all around. Team that traveled from Brisbane last week. The Black Ferns have come into town in Ottawa and made a big statement as they top the table here at World Rugby's 2023 Pacific Four competition. Awesome. 52 points to 21. So many young players getting involved. I'm sure Alan Bunce would be very happy. There was a lapse there at the end of that first half, but Canada clawed their way back. Proved that the Black Ferns aren't invincible. Normal service was regained as the bench was very effective for New Zealand and kept the pressure on the Canadians who couldn't quite respond. Disappointment for this Canadian team that we're looking to make history here. Beat New Zealand for the first time. But lots of players getting their first appearance in a 15s jersey. For Canada, two of them there. Simons and Apps. Claire Gallagher, the local girl, getting a run on. Also, 
So respect by both teams. Really nice crowd here. A record crowd for Canadian women's 15s rugby. 10,000 here in this Canadian football stadium. Probably most importantly, tons of youth, tons of kids here. These women leaving a legacy. They'll do it all again on Friday night. New Zealand will take on the USA and Canada with now a crucial match against the Americans. Sophie De Goody leading from the front. For New Zealand, it was a complete performance. Contributions all around the park. No surprise that World Rugby Player of the Year, Demand, stepped up. Kennedy Simon was outstanding. But the MasterCard player of the match was indeed number 13, Amy Duplessy. And we are going to have a presentation from Keisha Tuax McMullen, the local player who is going to graduate from Okanaga High School. And just then we'll have a chat. Congratulations, Amy. You just flew over to Canada a few days ago. What's the secret to putting in the meters that you put in tonight? Oh, I guess it's a team game. Um, we've had an awesome week of prep and just um, happy to come out here and do everything I could for my team. And the Black Ferns are known for the culture. Can you describe the bond within the team? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're sisters. Um, we play for one, in, one another, play for our family. And when we come over here, you know, we just want to show the fans all over the world that we're um, one team and that we can do anything. Well, congratulations tonight. It was an amazing game. Thank you. Thank you. What a great moment there as Keisha Tuax McMillan presented the award to Duplessis. She's an outstanding top female athlete. And she got to rub shoulders with the very best in the Black Ferns. It's a disappointed Canada side that worked incredibly hard. And I think they should be proud. They gave this crowd something to cheer about. A few mistakes that cost them against the world's best. And I know their captain, Sophie Degutti, who worked so hard from the front.